for our Sunday school. We will be looking at clean hands and a pure heart. No, yes. we are not starting the new material. Remember last week after the class, we announced that we would commence new material. This is not the new material yet. This is like a filler until we get into that, say, next week or so. All right, so we're talking about clean hands and a pure heart today. And for that, we want to turn to Psalm, Psalm 24, verses 1 to 6. Now, I have the new Living Translation. Well, actually, I have the... <coughs> Anybody has a new Living Translation? Or everybody has King James? You have new Living? Excellent. All right. I'm going to read Psalm 24, 1 to 6 for you from the King James Version. And then we're going to look at it from the New Living Translation. It's a very familiar passage of scripture. All right? Um, many of you would have read it and reread it. Psalm 24. Psalm 24, verses 1 to 6. 1 to 6. It's a psalm that quite a few people love. And we're just going to get into it. No, just before... I read the scripture. We were just talking about in brief terms that we're facing like challenging times. You know, the times are perilous. They are not getting perilous. They are perilous. We are living in perilous times. Because the word of God declares that perilous times are coming. But we can rest assured that we are already in perilous times. The new buzzword right now is what? The new buzzword are buzzwords. Coronavirus, right? Talking about the coronavirus. It's like everywhere you turn, every newspaper you flip, every headline you see has coronavirus in it. I remember when I used to joke and say that when President Trump came into office, every single time you saw the news, President Trump, President Trump, yeah. President Trump, President Trump. It's like from that man came into office, the headlines have been dominated with his name. No, I am wanting to think that he's now secondary <laughs> to coronavirus. You understand? Secondary. And it's because this virus has people worried, has people concerned. It is not something to be taken lightly, mind you. It, it is really not something to be taken lightly. But where do we turn for comfort in, in times like this? Where do we turn? The word of God, the word of God. No, as it relates, and I'm, and I'm really going to come down to the word that we're going to read today, as it relates to the whole virus situation. We have been given some instructions. What are some of the instructions we have been given? Wash hands. Um, yes. Wash your hands. Yes. Don't shake hands. Don't shake hands. Don't shake hands. Don't shake hands. Don't give up help. Give up help. Oh, wow. Yes. So we're not shaking. We're doing And some in the and feet. feet. Oh, my God. Yes. Don't kiss. Don't kiss. Right, right. Don't no hold it. Right, no. stuff like that. So it's called keep away from cold mm -hmm. stuff. You can drink warm stuff, right? Room yes. temperature water. Room temperature water. All right. So people are coming up with remedies, but we're we're being told for the most part, wash your hands, right? Don't don't um try as best as you can to keep your hands clean, yes. sanitize. Yes. Do not touch your, your face. face. Why? Because the virus is looking entryways, eyes, nose, mouth, stuff like that. So what we're doing now is we are educating ourselves yes. as to how to protect yes. ourselves. All right. So we're going to see today that even in today's lesson, there are instructions there. We have instructions in the Bible. I believe that the Bible is our manual. Yes. Some call the Bible or the short 
well, the acronym B I B L E, basic instructions before leaving Earth. I do believe that the reason why we sometimes become confused and we don't know what to do, it's because we are not reading the Bible. Because if we read the Bible, we would see there that there are answers. There are some things. The Bible says there's nothing new under the sun. So there are answers there. So we are going to look to the word today to see in light of what's going on with coronavirus, what does the Bible say? Not necessarily to say, okay, did the Bible predict or talk about this virus coming? Not in that sense. But we're going to see some, some points that we can connect as it relates to that. All right. Yes, sir. You can read the Bible. Yes. The Bible itself says that if yes. you are not a spiritual, you must have adapted spiritual things. Right. Understand. True. True. Deacon Basu is saying that unless you, it's not everybody can just quickly and easily adapt to spiritual things. So you may not understand. The, the word itself says that spiritual things cannot be carnally discerned. And that is true. You cannot grab a hold of spiritual things in the flesh. Yes. And that is why a lot of people around us who are not saved, they are, it's not because they don't, you know, they read or you try to, and it's not clear because they don't have that level of understanding of spiritual things. Their spiritual eyes are not open. All right? The spiritual eyes are not open. So, we're going to look in God's word and we're going to try to break down a particular verse as it relates to what's happening in our times now. That's basically it. I'm making a connection between what we're being told to do in the event of this whole coronavirus and what, how we can connect that to our daily lives, our spiritual lives. All right, so let's look at Psalm 24, verses 1 to 6. Now, I'm going to start at, well, I'm going to read it in the King James, and then Sister Anne Marie is going to read it in the New Living Translation. So here we go. Psalm 24. The earth is the Lord's, and the fullness thereof, the world, and they that dwell therein. For he hath founded it upon the seas, and established it upon the floods. Who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? The answer is given. Verse 4. He that had clean hands and a pure heart, who had not lifted up his soul unto vanity, nor sworn deceitfully, he shall receive the blessing from the Lord and the righteousness from the God of his salvation. This is the generation of them that seek him, that seek thy face, O Jacob. And that word there, Sila, is just to pause and think about that. You know, like, think about what you just read. So, Sister Anne-Marie, Psalm 24, verses 1 to 6, New Living Translation. The earth is the Lord's and everything in it, the world and all its he laid the earth's foundation on the seas and built upon the ocean depths. Who may find the mountain of the Lord? Who may stand in his holy place? Only those whose hands and hearts are pure, who do not worship idols and never reside. They will see the Lord's blessing and have a right relationship with God in their city. Such people may seek you and worship in your presence, O oh God. Amen. Amen. Now, we just read a pastor of scripture that many of us are familiar with. Now, our focus today is going to be on verse 4. But the reason why I asked Sister Anne Marie to read it in the New Living Translation is so that you can have an understanding of what the passage is saying in everyday language. You know, King James sometimes can be a little bit antiquated. So that version like breaks it down for us so that it's better to understand. But Verse 4, in just focusing on that, and that will be our area today, right? The question was asked in verse 3, who shall ascend into the hill of the Lord? Or who shall stand in his holy place? 
And the answer says, He that hath clean hands and a pure heart. All right, we're going to check that out for a minute. In this coronavirus, we're told to wash our hands, right? And we're doing that because they said clean hands will reduce the risk of contaminating our bodies by touching our faces. The virus needs an entry point, so it's like our eyes, our nose, our mouth. What if, and this is the question I'm asking us today now, what if we were to keep our hands clean? Otherwise, what if we could understand that this is not just a physical command to keep our hands clean, but a spiritual command. For example, if you dabble, and this is just a general thing, I'm not saying anybody here does that, but say you dabble in witchcraft, are your hands clean? No. I, I'm just asking. If you were to get involved in things that we know are not pleasing to God, are our hands clean? No. If we look at them, we say, okay, I washed. Yes. But is it clean? If we were to steal or kill, yes. right? Does that mean our hands are clean? No. I'm asking. You can answer. No. 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 Because you see, the physical washing, physically, you yes. go and you run the hot water. Yes. They say as hot as you can take it. And you wash for 20 seconds. Listen, this virus, you need to wash more than 20 seconds. I'm just saying. But you wash and you wash and you make sure you get the crevices and all of that. And there are a lot of videos even showing us how to wash our hands. Listen, in light of the virus, we can go to the pipe and do this. But we have to make sure that our hands are clean spiritually as yes. well. We don't dabble in stuff yes. that the Lord has forbidden. We don't kill. We don't steal. We don't take stuff that don't belong to us. I mean, sometimes working in an office environment, this is just an example now. You work in an office and the people them have stationary pen, pencil, paper, sharpener, calculator, you name it. And they have like a room or a stock room that they keep these stuff. And you decide, well, I don't have no pen. Let me take one. You're not taking it to be used on the job enough. You pocket it and you take it home. Or you, whatever you do with it. I'm just saying, right? Some people can actually think that they're entitled to people things. I'm, I'm just, right? You can feel like you're entitled. If you kill, now we know that nowadays you don't just kill with a sword or a yes. knife or a bullet. You yes. can kill with your mouth. Yes. Right? But because we're focusing on the hands, mm -hmm. keeping our hands clean, you know, I'm using those things that we sometimes use our <laughs> hands to do. So we have established it that our hands may be clean physically, but they may be dirty spiritually. Yes. And we have to watch out for that. Yes. We have to make sure that we're not doing things as a form of showing, you know, well, I'm doing this. But we have to make sure that it is a part of our spiritual lifestyle as well. Yes. So we can take away from this period, you know, talking about Corona, talking about washing hands, talking about doing the right thing to prevent contamination. But we have to make sure that we're not also contaminating our spirit. Yes. Because listen, Corona will come. Coronavirus will come and it will go. It will go. In the name of Jesus, it will. Yes. It will die. Oh, you it, it will die. But we have to make sure that after this has come and gone, that our hands are still being washed. Yes. Yes. We're still keeping them clean. Yes. We have to make sure that anything that we do, it brings God, it brings Glory to God. No, if we find that something that we're doing is not giving God glory, what we're gonna do? All right, we're coming, we're coming to it, we're coming to it. Then of course it talks about a pure heart. Because remember today we're talking about clean hands and a pure heart. A pure heart. So the washing of the hands or keeping hands clean speak to our actions 
while a pure heart, which we're going to talk about now, speak to our intentions. All right? It's so important for us to pay attention to those things because we cannot just come and say, you know, I'm a Christian, I'm saved, sanctified, filled with the Holy Ghost, on my way to heaven, everything is all right. We are still humans, yes. but we don't use it as a cop out to do what we want. You know, nowadays, the one of, well, the other buzzwords are, don't judge me. Oh. Or you're judging me. Mm. You understand? I always say you don't have to judge anybody because you really don't know their lives like that. Watch the fruits. Mm. What is being produced? Mm. Listen, fancy clothes mm. can't come up a dirty heart. Yes. That's right. it, it's, just, it's just the way it is. Yes. You can put on the brightest red lipstick. Yes. The most beautiful wig or weave. Yes. All right? You cannot cover. You ever notice that some people look well put together? Yes. And the moment they speak, you hear their heart coming out. And it's like, sometimes they say, oops, that slipped out my mouth. No. It slipped where? From where? From the heart. Because what does the Bible say? Out of the abundance of the heart, the mouth speaks. So sometimes it's really the mouth that gives away what's inside of the heart. Yes. Only God really knows people's intentions. Yes. Remember that you can intend to do something, but you never really did it. Yes. But at the end of the day, what are you thinking about? What are you considering? What's passing through your mind? Because remember, it starts there first. Every action originated with a thought. Right? Even if it's a quick one. You have some, well, I guess I watch too much TV, but you have some crimes that are described as crimes of passion, right? But like, for example, when it's a domestic affair and one killed the other, they say it was a crime of passion because either jealousy or some kind of emotion crept in. They, they are together with somebody and then they just see them with somebody else. They know it's not like a person's guilty of any wrongdoing, but they just see it and they become enraged and then murder occurs, and they say that was a crime of passion, you know? And then you have those that they, I guess they call them crimes of, well, opportunity or weapons of opportunity where you grab the first thing that you saw and you, you know, hit the person. But we have to be careful about what's going on in our hearts yes. because it is there, right? One of the things about this coronavirus, one of the things that they're asking us to do is to check for <coughs> underlying heart conditions. Isn't that so? Because if you have an underlying condition or a pre-condition or a pre-existing condition, they say you're more susceptible to the disease, to the virus. So we're checking now for underlying conditions. So that some, some people don't even know that they're there yeah. until something happens and then they go, oh, I didn't know, I didn't know I had heart disease, I didn't know that I had respiratory illnesses. All of these are speaking to our ability to breathe and breathe well, to breathe properly. That's why they're saying some of the symptoms are high fever, exceeding, I think they say 104, nurse, help me, degrees, right? What is normal? 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90, 90. Some under 100. Is normal. Even if I think you even hit a hundred, probably you could still, you know, function. But once it goes past a certain limit, that's dangerous, right? So they say high fever. What else? What are some of the other? It's a, a, a trouble to breathe. Trouble and, breathing. And dry cough. 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 A dry cough. Right. Tightness of the chest. Problem. Stuff like that. Problem. Problem. Take a, right, they can take a deep breath and hold it. Some people are a bit tired, all of that. You know, sometimes, I'll give you a quick, quick, quick story. Mom's day, she would remember. Years ago, years ago, we did a cruise. And the cruise visited Dominica. And, and I'll tell you, it was my husband, myself, his mom, and another friend. And we're walking through Dominica. And we noticed that she was lagging behind. She just her pace just slowed 
And we're like, walk up, man. You know, I mean, it's a fellow Jamaican, so I'm telling her to go. I just say, just hold on. I, 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 I feel a little tired. And I'm like, tired? We just got off the ship. Why are you tired already? So it got to the point where she really started to feel like she was in distress. I mean, she wasn't puffing and puffing on the street, but she knew. She knew her body, and she knew that something not right. So we started to look on every street, every alley to see if we could find a doctor. We ended up seeing, because you know, doctors have their signs oh, yeah. outside, right? So we saw one, went close up, only to find out it wasn't um, like a general practitioner. I think it was some specialist. Uh, it could have been a gynecologist. I think it was a gynecologist. So we rushed in, explained what was happening with our friend, the receptionist, you know, took her to the doctor right away, somewhere in the back. They came back after a couple minutes with a letter in their hand saying, urgent, find your way to the hospital now with your friend. No, I, 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 I think that could have been my first trip to Dominica. We hadn't been there well. Mom's is from there, so she's familiar with all of that. But we had to get in a vehicle and rush to the hospital. Long shot, long and short of the story, when we got there, Guess what was the diagnosis? A mild heart attack. Wow. Yeah. She didn't, she didn't have any idea that this was going on in her body. But the symptoms presented themselves as soon as she started to exert herself. So I'm saying we can have underlying conditions that will affect our immune system. You know, it weakens our immune system, it weakens our ability to withstand any kind of illness that comes. So it's like you have to be so careful, you have to make sure that your immune system is strong. But now we're talking about a pure heart. So the pure heart speaks to our intentions. It is said that for this coronavirus, we, can, we need to check for underlying conditions, preconditions or heart conditions, respiratory illnesses. The disease seeks to attach itself to the lungs. That's what you've heard, right? Yes. And that's what causes the difficulty in breathing, which causes shortness of breath, which may even lead to death. And that's when some people expire. Mm -hmm. It's when they're no longer able to breathe, you know, because of what the illness is doing to their bodies. So it causes death. So what does it mean to have a pure heart? And I'm asking that now, based on what we've read. What do you think it means to have a pure heart, what exactly does even pure mean? What does pure mean? Clean, clean, undefiled. I love that. Spotless, clean, pure. What does pure mean? Healthy. All right. I like that. Any other suggestions? Pure. When we talk about pure, what are we talking about? Got it, got it. All right, well, I'd like to add some more. Unmixed, unmixed, right? So when we're talking about something being pure, you, you ever heard 100% whatever it is? That means it is not mixed with anything. All right? Yes, sir. Before we get to the heart, brother, what should we say? Saying, well, all right, 
and we talked about that washing hands as such, but it is having that posture, even when we come to worship, even when we come to give God what we call it, our praise, our adoration. Can you imagine? You're lifting what we're supposed to be lifting called holy hands, mm -hmm. but our lifestyle is unholy. Yes. Our lifestyle is not pure. Yes. Our lifestyle, it depicts something other than what God requires. That is um, what, what I call that now. Well, the Lord himself will have to judge that or sort that out because anybody can come in a church service and lift yes. their hands. And I've always said this, brethren, when you come before the presence of the Lord, well, first of all, you can't hide from his presence. So even when you're at home, even if you decide to hide under the bed, he can still see you. All right? But I'm saying, when we come together in the presence of the Lord, one of the first things that we really and truly should be doing is a prayer of repentance. Some people say, I don't have anything to repent about. I didn't sin this week. I did well this week. I didn't cuss nobody this week. I did not steal anything. I did not. You understand? So they're looking at those things. But sometimes we do sin in what we call words, thoughts, and deeds. Because if you have an unholy thought, keep running through your mind. Okay, the human side will cause that thought to even enter. But if you don't hold it captive, if you do not bring it under the subjection of Christ, what do you think is going to happen? Because it's going to manifest. Yes. You're going to do what you're thinking. You're going to think, all right, I'm just going to use this. You know, says a long time, I believe that brother checking me. Right? I'm, I'm just going to use an example. You're single, even if you're married, because nowadays it's like anything goes. The brother checking you. You know that certain interactions are going to lead to further things. What you have to do is kill the thought from it enters your mind because if you entertain it, trust me, it's only a matter of time, you're going to go all the way. You are going to go all the way. All right? So just coming back to talking about pure, what does pure mean? It's unmixed, it's authentic, which is the same as genuine. And it also speaks to uncontaminated. You hear that word again? You hear that word again? All right. Now, when we talk about contaminated, we're talking about pollution, poison, defilement, when things are tarnished. Now, what are some of the things that can contaminate or pollute or tarnish our hearts? I'm asking you now. What are some of the things? that can cause that level of contamination at a heart level. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness. Sister, Sister Juicy Fruit. Unforgiveness. Anything else? Contamination. Eyes? Your eyes. True. Yeah. It sounds, you know, out there. Well, that's big one for you. <laughs> but the eyes. Yeah. Right. What you see, you, you, see you heard that? And guess what? It came from a man. Because it is no, it's a known thing that men are more visual as it relates to certain things. Something that a woman would just, you know, overlook. The men, they grab onto it, they latch onto it with their eyes. There's a saying also that men are like light bulbs, light switch, the switch, but the women are like irons, take a while to warm up. Well, that's another story for another time. A different class, not this one. All right, not this one. But I'm saying, there are some things that can pollute the heart, that can contaminate the heart. You said them. Unforgiveness, hatred, resentment, grudge, bad-mindedness, <laughs> right? Unforgiveness, gossip, yes, yeah. Because these are things that we indulge in. You ever hear some people, um, well, first, well, I, I can only refer to how a Jamaican would say, all right? Sometimes people approach you, and they have a juicy piece of gossip to share, you know. Hear them. You're not really a talking about the business, but that's how they start out. That's how they start out. And it's like, if you're not careful, you are indulging in what some maybe want to term as holy gossip. 
You know, because some people really love to spiritualize yeah. everything. Yeah. Um, I guess go to tell you to, to pray. Pray. I guess go to tell you to pray. Oh, 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 I come to, yes, let's yes. pray for yeah. her. Yeah. Or let's pray for him. Yeah. So, yes, God save. Like it. Like yeah. their concern. I don't tell you this, but no, it's about that. It's, it's like their concern. Yeah. Exactly. Oh, but another thing too. You have, I've heard some prayers, right? I've heard some prayers. Where, for example, somebody will start to pray and, oh Lord, bless us today. Lord, we thank you for the food, we thank you for shelter, thank you for clothes on our backs. And Lord, I pray for sister so and so that she would leave the people and husband alone. <laughs> that is a prayer. No, you, you understand what I'm saying? So we have to be so careful that we're not indulging in anything that is going to pollute the heart, contaminate the heart underlying high conditions. You see where I'm going with this? Because in this eve of the whole corona, wash your hands, right? Check for underlying conditions. What are those things that are hidden in our lives that's impeding us, that's causing us not to be able to move forward with God? We come to church and it's like we're up today, next week we're down. We come back next week, we're up again, the following week we're down. It's like we're always taking two steps forward and four steps back. What if we can really go to God and say, Lord, it's not pretty enough. Let's be real with God. Let's be genuine. Can we hide anything from God? Or no. oh, some of us sometimes want like we can outsmart God. And we come, oh Lord, most gracious Father, you know, and we start one piece of something. When we should be saying, oh Lord, have mercy on me, a sinner. Y'all remember the prayer with the publican? Yes. And the, you know, and he yes. was like, I'm glad that I'm not like, like that one. Yes. And he was so puffed up in his own self and he was going on. But which one of those prayers did the Lord hear? The simple, humble prayer. So we have to be so careful. Yes, brother Tad. Yes, I do. Some joke, right? Yes. <laughs> but that's serious still. Yes. <laughs> This person just lately started to tell me a story. Yeah. So I know that I don't want to hear because I want to do it. So I thought it was a joke. I said, now, why do you want me to do When I go to court and I line up in the box, right. did the judge ask me, did I see it? <laughs> why do you want me to tell the joke? We just laugh it off in the And that was it. That's so you way. found a smart way to just put that aside. You use humor to just lay that aside. And I think he's going back to what we're talking about. You know, when people come with their stories under, under the guise of, okay, this is, you know, something good that I want to share with you. You have to be so wise and use the wisdom of God. Sometimes you don't really have to shame and embarrass them. 